on. So for this week, uh, we will have week one wherein we're going to discuss uh, several topics such as charge and the Columns Law. So those are, are our topics for this week. So let's start by defining charges. So when we say charges, by definition, it is the physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in a uh, electromagnetic force. So uh, when we say charges, po kasi, it, uh, it occurs when there is a uh, parang external or excitation force that is applied in a certain material or object. Kumbaga, uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng charges, it's because there is a electromagnetic force. Okay? Then we have two kinds of charges. First, we have the positive charge. Second is the negative charge. That is why we have uh, in a battery, for example, meron tayong uh, positive terminal and negative terminal. So those are the terminals or points wherein those charges will come. Next is we define vector field. Vector field, by, by definition, is a function of space whose value at each point is a vector quantity. Then when we say source charge, the charge particle causing the electric field to exist. So ang source charge po natin, ang pinaka-reason o pinaka-dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng electric field. Okay? So uh, just a review, we, uh, we will review this uh, three. First is the neutron. When we say neutron, it is the particles wherein it has zero charge. So ang symbol ng neutron natin is N raised to zero. Then uh, raised to zero, ibig sabihin exponent niya zero. Then electron is the ones who has negative charge. So ang symbol natin dito would be N raised to, uh, sorry, E raised to uh, negative sign. Okay? So E exponent negative sign. Then proton natin are the ones who has positive charges. So ang symbol natin dito is P raised to positive sign. So Coulomb's law. So by definition, nasabi po dito, Coulomb's law is a law stating that charges repel and opposite charges attract with the force proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So, Sir Bray, ano po kayang ibig sabihin po nun? So, hindi ko po naintindihan. So, ang Coulomb's Law, uh, please uh, have in mind that, uh, that the law states that ang like charges natin, o ibig sabihin, ang parehas na charge, positive, positive, negative, negative, they repel. And opposite charges, so positive, negative, negative, positive, they attract. No? So as stated here, ang force daw natin is proportional to the product of charges. So let's say that we have two, two charges. So on charge 1 natin, as a charge 2, denoted by Q1 and Q2. So yung product ni Q1 and ni Q2 daw ay proportional to the force. Ibig sabihin po, ang force natin can be as the same position with the product of the charges and uh, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Ibig sabihin po, kung ano man po ang distance ni charge 1 and ni charge 2, yun po yung magiging denominator natin. Then, is a square po natin. So, ito po siya, no? Ito ang Coulomb's Law formula. So, please take note that the formula for Coulomb's Law is as follows. Meron tayong F or the force is equal to K, absolute value of Q1 multiplied to the absolute value of Q2 or the charge 1, absolute value multiplied to the absolute value of charge 2 over the square of the distance between them. So yung K natin is denoted by 8.99 times 10 to the 9th power, okay? Uh, Newton meter squared per C squared. It, this is a constant. This is what you call the Coulomb's constant. Ibig sabihin po, at any circumstances, conditions, and situation, it will stay the same po. 8.99 times 10 raised to 9. So at any temperature, at any position, at any pressure, yan po ay same. Hindi po siya mababago. Then Q1 is the charge of particle 1 and Q2 is the charge of particle 2 which is 
both given po sa problems natin. And R is the distance between the two particles. So, ano man po yung distance nila, no? Napagkita ni Q1 at ni Q2 or the charge 1 and the charge 2. So, yun po ay isa square po natin. Okay, so uh, since references na siya, that is the end of week 1. Okay, so that would be the introduction for your week 1. So let's proceed to week 2. So for our second week recap, we will have conductors and the electric field. So here, ang gagawin natin first is we will define conductors. So when we say conductors, it is a material that permits an electric current to flow easily. Like microscopic samples of material, an ideal conductor consists of a huge amount of positive charge. So ang ibig sabihin po natin sa conductor, ito yung mga bagay or yung mga materials natin na inaalaw niya yung flow ng isang electrical charge. No? So, meron tayong electricity na pwedeng mag-flow doon sa material na yon. So, ano po ang opposite ni conductor? Yun po ang tinatawag nating insulator wherein yun yung mga materials natin na hindi talaga nila pinapermit at all ang entry or ang flow ng isang current. Sir, ano naman po yung gamit natin sa ating mga transistors, resistors, or sa mga electrical components po natin. Yun po ang tinatawag nating semiconductors wherein sila po ay may both characteristics ng conductors and insulators. So for the conductors, so para makompute natin ng isang conductor, meron tayong tinatawag na term na conductance. So si conductance, yun po ay symbolized by the word, uh, by the letter G. So, si G, ang unit po niyan ay Siemens or MO or MHO. Okay? So, yun po ang uh, unit ng conductance. Na ang formula for conductance would be G is equal to 1 over R. So, yung R po natin is yung resistance. Okay? So, ibig sabihin po nun, sir, ang reciprocal ng isang resistance ang tinatawag nating conductance. Okay? So, ang example ng conductors daw natin here is steel. So, by definition, electric field is an invisible entity which exists in the region around a charged particle. So, si electric field, nagkakaroon yan once na there is a charged particle. Then, pag tinignan mo siya, meron, may area tayo doon wherein uh, para siyang bilog, no? So, may area tayo doon, isa siyang region wherein ang tawag natin doon ay electric field. So, hindi natin yung nakikita ha, by the naked eyes, hindi po yung nakikita. So, source charge, and, uh, source charge diniscuss po natin kanina yan, ito yung particle natin na nagkukos ng isang electric field para magkaroon tayo ng electric field. While yung test charge natin, yun po yung ginagamit natin para sa mga experiments natin. It is a small value, small relative value that we use in experiments. So example of common conductors, we have copper, aluminum, gold. Okay, so yun yung example. Uh, yan pa lang yung ibang example. So marami pa yan. So it is stated there, here that in some materials, it is, pos it is positive charge that is free to move. Okay, so uh, let's discuss that one. So there are some authors of books na ang, ang sinasabi nila or they are claiming that the... Uh, that the charges who are freely moving inside a circuit are those of electrons. Electrons daw yung nagpo-flow. Ibig sabihin yung uh, negative charge daw po ang nagpo-flow doon sa ating uh, circuitry. But there are also some authors that, uh, that are claiming that uh, positive charges daw po ang nagpo-flow sa ating circuit. So either way, they are both correct. Correct po siya parehas. It is positive or negative, pwede po yun. Pag positive charge po ang nagpo-flow sa ating circuit, manggagaling po yan sa positive terminal. Therefore, ang tawag po natin doon is yung conventional flow. Pag naman po yung ating um, negative charge ang nag-flow, lalabas siya doon sa negative terminal ng ating uh, 
source. So, ang tawag natin dun sa flow ay electron flow. So, dalawa po yun ha. Please take note that a flow of uh, flow of current can be uh, can be defined using two kinds of uh, motion. We have uh, electron flow and conventional flow. Maalin po dun sa dalawa. Okay, so ang mahalaga lang po kung alin man ang gamitin mo na flow or type of flow, kailangan po yon ay matake into consideration mo yung mga parts or components ng circuit na dadaanan ni current. So electric is not a matter, it is not stuff. So it is not charge, it has no charge. It neither attracts nor repel uh, charged particles. So uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, we have five states of matter, diba? We have the solid, liquid, gas. Yung fourth natin is what we call the plasma. And yung fifth natin is the Bose-Einstein condensate. So, yung limang states of matter na yon wala pong electricity doon. Okay? Hindi po involves electricity because it is not a matter. Okay? So, ang gagawin po natin is, si plasma, intindihin po natin na this is a particle with relatively hot uh, temperature and si Bose-Einstein condensate has relatively cold uh, temperature. Okay? So, uh, the, uh, please take note that the force exerted on a negatively charged particle by an electric field is always in the direction opposite that of the electric field itself. Please take note that the force exerted is always in the direction opposite. Okay? So that would be all for your week 2 recap. Okay? So, yun na yung module nyo for week 2. Okay? So, for week 3, so this week, ang ating pag-uusapan naman ay ang electric current and EMF. So, when we define a circuit, it means that it is a closed conducting path through which charge flows. Para po siyang isang pipeline, okay? So, kung ano man yung dadaanan ng isang uh, charge natin, so let's say that is like water, no? Uh, water analogy tayo. So, yung tubig natin, yun yung charge po natin, no? So, pag siya ay nagkaroon na po ng uh, motion, so yun na po yung tinatawag nating electric current. So, yung current natin is syempre parang tubig, no? Parang pag tinulak na po siya, nung gripo natin, so, ang mangyayari po dyan is yan ay hahanap, di ba, ng kanyang pupuntahan. So, ang mga tubo po natin, yun po yung conducting path. Yun po yung circuit natin. Okay? So, si electric current, ang gagawin niya is as long as meron daan para sa akin na pupuntahan, pupuntahan ko yan. No? So, that is your current. So, EMF by definition, so this is what we call the electromotive force. So, si electromotive force ang pinaka-reason o pinaka-dahilan kung bakit po nagkakaroon tayo ng charge to flow in a circuit. So, para po siyang yung gripo natin. So, yung gripo natin, ang gagawin is siya yung magsusupply ng tubig. Okay? So, ganun din po siya sa isang circuit. So, gawin na, uh, gawa natin siya ng comparison. So, ang ating pinakagripo, ang tinatawag natin yan. Ito po, yung symbol for EMF. Where in yung mas mahabang linya, yun yung positive terminal. And yung mas maiksing linya, yun yung negative terminal. So, yung resistor daw natin is a poor conductor. Of course, no, as we have discussed in the past uh, topic, the conductance is the reciprocal of your resistance. Therefore, if you want to compute for the resistance, kunin mo lang yung reciprocal ng conductance. Okay? Then symbol R used for resistance. We have here yan. So I know you have already encountered this kind of symbol. No? So meron na tayo matagal na. So that is for your re resistance or resistor. So, this is used to represent a resistor in a diagram. The symbol R is typically used to represent the value of resistance in a resistor. So, uh, let's consider the circuit down below. Nakikita nyo po dyan. So, meron tayong tinatawag na seat of EMF. So, that is your voltage. No? Then, we have there your resistance. 
we have there your resistance. So, pwede yung kahit anong value. So, let's say you have 10 ohms. So, that is your resistance. Then, yung wire or wire conductor, yun po yung path na dinadaanan po ng ating circuit. Okay? Uh, ng ating charge, sorry. So, ang uh, example natin niya, kung gagawin po natin, gagawin natin siya sa isang tubig. No? So, yung EMF natin, yung gripo, then yung wire, uh, open parenthesis, conductor, close parenthesis, yun yung ating tubo, then yung ating resistor, siya yung tubo natin na, uh, imagine niyo yung tubo na medyo ano, damage, yung parang nasikipan na tubo, parang gano'n, yung parang... Uh, uh, let's say yung tubo ay uh, ginamitan mo ng plies at pinisil mo. So, nagkaroon siya ng uh, parang sumikip yung daanan ng tubig doon sa part na yun. Then, pabalik ulit doon sa gripo. Okay? So, let's say that is just uh, analogy lang, no? Analogy lang po yan. So, ang gagawin niya, pag naglabas po tayo ng tubig, then magkakaroon tayo ng flow ng tubig doon. Then, yung resistor natin, since nga uh, meron siyang conflict sa pagpasok ng tubig doon, uh, babagal yung flow ng tubig natin or yung uh, labas ng tubig would be uh, not that much compared doon sa wala pa pong uh, sira yung tubo natin. So, magkakaroon ng kaunting resistance to the motion. So, ang kulang na lang natin doon sa analogy natin would be the flow of water itself which is can, uh, can be denoted by uh, I or current. Okay. So, kung may value tayo ng E or nung voltage natin, then yung R natin may value, we can get the value of your I or the current by deriving Ohm's law. Diba? So, meron tayong Ohm's law. So, kung may value lang tayo ni voltage at ni resistance, pwedeng-pwede na po natin isolve ang Ohm's law. Okay. So, makukuha na natin yung uh, current. And yung current po natin uh, has units. Ang units po natin doon is coulombs per second dahil measure natin yung flow of charges over time. So, since siya ay flow of charge over time, so that is coulombs over second or C over S. The combination of units is given a name which is what we call ampere. So, 1 ampere natin is also equivalent to 1 coulomb per second. So, if we have 10 coulomb per second, we have 10 amperes. All right. So that is the end of our week three discussion of um, electrical current and EMF. Okay, so uh, I hope you understand the lesson for today.